Without further ado, let me explain how I got this little audio visualizer to work. This is a slightly revamped version of it, so let me show it to you real quick. Um, I've got a mouse look script on here. Each one of these poles kind of corresponds with a frequency, bass, mids, and treble. This is a dubstep song. We've got a lot higher bass there. Anyways, so that's these objects in the circle here. They're just cylinders that I'm animating. I'm changing their height value based off of um, based off of some data that I'm getting from a very handy function in Unity. So let me show you that function. This is what you really want to know about. Get spectrum data. It's available on any audio source. You pass in a variable which is a float array. You can see I defined it up here. Now I defined it, uh, I have it in the script here, so you can change your value of the float array. Right now I'm doing 1,024 samples. It has to be an even number. That's the only criteria here, so don't go with odd numbers. Try to keep it a small number. Um, the more uh, elements in the array, the more processing power you're going to need. So if you can get away with 256, do, do it. Do 256. Sorry, that's an array. Um, the next value is what channel are we listening to? So zero means listen to all channels. Uh, the third value is the FFT window, which is a bunch of mathematics that I really do not understand since I am not a mathematician. I am a lowly programmer. So, and you can see here in the inspector, these are the algorithms or uh, FFT windows that you can choose. I like Blackman Harris, but think of them as ways of rounding uh, groups of audio data. So like, um, you know, uh, you've got zero to 100 is around your base ranges, and then you've got your tr middle and treble. I'm not, I'm not an audiophile either, funny enough that I made this. Um, I just made it work. I don't know this stuff. I just make it work. Uh, anyways, so you slice up the audio file. It's like a time slice of the audio file. What is playing at this particular second? And then it looks at it, and then it says, uh, you know, it figures out the intensity of the bass, the mids and the trebles, uh, based off the hertz. Then it kind of generalizes, and then it's, you know, it finds the median value that corresponds with however many samples you throw in there. So if you tell it two samples, you're going to get high and low, period. And it's going to be the average of all the highs going into the high and all the lows going to the low. Um, whatever that average happens to be. It's probably going to be very low since very few audiophiles actually use all of the hertz in the high range, like from... Um, 11,000 on up to 22,000, you would have to have something in, you know, using up all the hertz between 11,000 all the way up to 22,000 in order to get a, you know, a slight value in that second float. Um, but the more samples you break it up, the better. Uh, I got 1,024 as my default just because I like the way it looks. Play with it, see what you get. Then I just loop over the objects in my array and I take the value which is kind of the intensity of the sound at you know that float point I mean that float element and then I multiply it by my multiplier just because they're usually pretty small you know unity likes to go from zero to one um, and you're averaging over a large you know sweep of Hertz so you might not have a lot going on in there, so you want to multiply that, make it actually visible. And then I use that intensity to animate the size using the lerp function, um, and then I just put in the new scale. So the real meat and potatoes here is using that get spectrum data. That will return the analysis of the frequency spectrum of your sound file. A uh, really cool trick you could try to do at some point is analyze hertz. And, you know, if you 
Um, you could put in a number of samples that kind of corresponds to notes, like notes that you sing or play on a piano, and then you would just loop through the array and say which array element has the highest intensity, figure out which element does that correspond to with a note on a scale, and then you could say with pretty good certainty, and I've done this before in another program, you can say with pretty good certainty what note is being played or sung. And you can also, um, obviously because audio source could be a microphone, use it to listen to a room and pick up that sort of stuff. Fun things you can do with that, so explore it. There is a documentation on Unity about it. Um, it's not particularly helpful, other than giving you sort of rules like, oh, well, okay, so you could not pass in a minimum float of two. It's got to be 64 at the very least. Um, and then a max of 8,192. They do have to be a power of two and fun little rules like that. I hope that you guys find this somewhat helpful and it gets you started on your own projects. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'll include, I'll include this project file as a download in the doobly-doo.